It has the ring of a Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale, if a supremely ironic one. Tiny Denmark is home to six million of the world's wealthiest and healthiest people, all those muesli munching cyclists. Even their letter O's sometimes come slashed in half. But Denmark is also home to what is suddenly Europe's largest company, Novo Nordisk, a pharmaceutical firm with a market cap of a half trillion dollars thanks to products that, wait for it, combat obesity. Novo's drugs Ozempic and Wagovi have slimmed down Hollywood stars and millions of non-celebrities worldwide, while adding great heft to Denmark's economy. We travel to the Baltic to see how a country with a slender ego is coping with this most unlikely injection of fantastic wealth. The story will continue in a moment. Just another Copenhagen commuter headed off to work in the morning. Lada Berenutsen goes unnoticed, first on the train, then Pep and her step, walking from the station to the office she shares with two others. Understating matters, as one does in Denmark, you'd never know from appearances that she is the scientist whose research at Novo Nordisk led to perhaps the most revolutionary drug this century. I'm so grateful. Uh, I've always just been a nerdy little scientist uh, who kind of found home here in this company for 35 years. Is that really your sense of self still these days? I'm proud, but I'm also humble and really very focused on the fact that it was, uh, it was a team, it was a team effort. Modesty aside, her discoveries helped create Ozempic and Wagovi which not only treat type 2 diabetes and obesity, but are now approved for treating cardiovascular disease as well. This, of course, has made her a billion uh, not so fast. You know, I'm actually not super interested in actually having um, a whole lot of uh, money. I don't think that uh, it doesn't look like it's making people happy, right? Money's not... Something that's I, I like important to pay to you. my taxes. I like the society that we live in. I like that there's equal access to uh, to healthcare. I really like that. Long as you brought it up, let's get this out of the way. There is very little rotten in the state of Denmark. This is the land that gave us Lego, province of peddling, all fishing nets and safety nets. And today, Novo Nordisk's success and the spike in demand for Ozempic is fattening the country's economy, creating thousands of jobs bolstering national pension plans, keeping mortgage rates low. Novo now has a market cap larger than the entire country's GDP, giving rise to a new national emblem, drugs so popular they've become embedded in pop culture, at least in the U.S., where the company advertises liberally, including on this broadcast. But in Denmark, pharmaceutical advertising is illegal. This is very, very unfamiliar for Danish persons, this kind of uh, uh, advertisement. They wouldn't like it. It's it's not very Danish. Peter Lund Madsen is a celebrated neurologist and writer, and like most Danes, delighted that America's demand for Novo Nordisk drugs is Denmark's gain. Help us understand where this company fits in the Danish national consciousness right now. Novo is a part of Denmark because we are a small country, and finally we have a big company in Europe much bigger than anything the Swedes have. So, so we like that notion. You can hold us over the Swedes. Yes, yes. Because oh, we, they've always right. had cars and airplanes and big companies, but now we have Novo. Take that, that IKEA. Like, yes, yes, yes. It's the first time. Danishness courses through Novo Nordisk's bloodstream. The company was founded in the early 1920s by August Crow, a Nobel laureate, and his wife Marie, a doctor. Their motivation wasn't financial, it was personal. Marie was diagnosed with diabetes, at the time, a death sentence. This drug that we're seeing right here helped save the life of Marie. It did. She was very discreet about it. She did not want anybody to know that she was diabetic because Marie was a doctor. She was not a patient. Hanna Sinbeck, a Danish journalist, has written two books about Novo Nordisk and the Crows. We spoke to her in a lecture theater in what was the Danish medical school where the Crows first met. Is it fair to say that this origin story of Novo Nordisk starts as a, as a love story? It is absolutely fair to say it. He was teaching her as she was a medical student. He fell in love with her right away. 
When, in 1922, they heard that Canadian scientists had stumbled upon a miracle cure for diabetes, insulin, they traveled to Toronto and came home with the rights to manufacture the drug in Scandinavia. Sounds very nice of the Canadian scientists. Did they ask for anything else in, in return? They asked that nobody should, person should profit from it. It should be to the benefit of humanity. That was the, the price, you can say. It was a way to get this life-saving drug out in the world fast. Back in Denmark, within months, they set up the Nordisk Insulin Company. In keeping with their agreement, they established a nonprofit foundation, which today controls 77 percent of the company's voting shares. So the agreement was that uh, if there were revenues and proceeds from the, the sales of, of insulin here in Scandinavia, it should be returned to society in the form of uh, support for research into physiology and medicine. Mats Krogsgaard is the foundation's CEO. Today, it is the largest philanthropic organization in the world, bigger than the Gates Foundation. This is actually a 384 plate that Karen has there, you know. And While Novo Nordisk always focused on diabetes drugs, it did branch out beyond medicine. In the late 80s, young Lotta Knudsen was assigned to the enzyme team, which had the noble goal of making sure reds and whites didn't run in the wash. You started with laundry detergent. Yes, I did, yeah. It's the same story, right, of just wanting to make a product that's useful. In the early 90s, she came across a new study about a naturally occurring gut hormone, GLP-1, that lowered blood sugar levels and suppressed appetite. She thought if it could be harnessed into a drug, it could revolutionize treatment for diabetes and obesity. She went to her boss, Novo's head of research, Mats Krogsgaard. Yes, the same guy who now heads the foundation. What do you remember about her? She was the first one to march into my office with the red hair and very fired up showing me a publication that was not even published yet. She was talking very agitatedly about this, and I was getting excited. I understand you also had to convince senior management about obesity and, and what it was, that this wasn't a, a behavioral choice necessarily. They felt, just go up on a bike, do some jogging, do some biking. Just get off the couch and exercise. Yeah, and I started trying to convince them that it's not getting on the bike. If you're genetically predisposed, living in the environment we are in today, you're at very high risk, and something should be done about that. For the next 20 years, they worked on that GLP-1 molecule before Ozempic finally made it to market as a type 2 diabetes drug. It took another four years for Wagovi to be approved for weight loss. It turned Novo Nordisk from niche player to a company bigger than Coca-Cola and Procter & Gamble. The CEO is Lars Freuergaard Jurgensen. So typically Danish, his compensation package of roughly $10 million is dwarfed by his U.S. counterparts. His office is a co-working space atop Novo's Copenhagen headquarters, designed in the shape of an insulin molecule. So your next building needs to be the molecule of an anti-obesity yes, drug. Yes, it should. Jurgensen is only the fifth chief executive since the company was founded. Ask him about the weight of the job, and no CEO god complex here, he defaults to the company mantra, the Novo Nordisk way. Yeah, so the Novo Nordisk way is the basic thinking of our founders and, and key elements linked to how we treat each other, how we collaborate, and that's about being open and honest. It's all about being accountable. This sounds almost like a, a, a cult, a religious movement, and not so much a pharmaceutical firm. I think the values are based on ordinary, human, decent values. You appreciate you're not sounding very much like an American CEO right now. Well, um, I think I'm very grounded as an individual. My upbringing has, has given me a lot of, uh, say, groundness. And in Denmark, chief executives are expected to be grounded. In Denmark, it's very unrespectable to flash their money. Rich people in Denmark, they tend to buy cheaper cars in order to stay out of trouble. So the, the CEO of Novo Nordisk, if, if he's driving around Copenhagen in a yes. Ferrari or a limousine, how, how does that play? Poorly. But the other way around, it, if he was driving around in a cheap car, that would be a very good thing for him. Oh, I like his driving such a car. He's, he's a true Dane. But for all of Novo Nordisk's Danish high-mindedness, there is a growing chorus of complaint in America. Stop ripping us off.
As an avowed socialist, Bernie Sanders may find plenty to like about Denmark. But at a Senate hearing in September, Sanders excoriated Jorgensen over allegations of price gouging. The CEO told the committee what he told us. The benefits of Novo's drugs to global health will ultimately save trillions of dollars. And if anything is to blame for the high prices, it's the fractured U.S. health care system. What is the response to the skeptical American that says, come on, this is big pharma, this pricing is predatory, they're making money off people with, with health problems. Yeah. This is not utopia. This is just another big, greedy business. Of course it's, it's greedy. Uh, you have to compete in the world as it is. And I don't think that Novo Nordisk has all these values just to be nice. They have it because it's good business. They're not blind to capitalism. That there, there will be <laughs> Absolutely rivals. Absolutely not. There. They're capitalists right. at heart. In this but you can be a capitalist right. with great values. Right. And to keep up with the global demand for Novo's drugs, less than 1% of sales come from inside Denmark, the company is sinking billions into new plants worldwide. And just a few miles down the road from the cranes in the Danish countryside sits this quintessential Scandinavian institution. Half boarding school, half summer camp, and state subsidized, of course. It's a health facility for the small portion of Danes who are diagnosed with obesity. Recently, enrollment has declined by almost half, and some of the empty beds are being filled by, get this, newly recruited Novo employees as they try to find permanent housing. That's a way we can gain a little money. You know, now we have less students, so... Bit of an irony, right? Yeah, it is. Lars Jorgensen has been a therapist and life coach here for 20 years. When you heard these drugs were coming on the market mm. from Denmark, mm. did, did you think, oh boy, this, we did. this could impact us? Yes, we did. So if somebody says, I, I'm just going to take these anti-obesity drugs rather than come here. Mm -hmm. What would you tell them? I would tell them to think about what made you eat too much in the first place. What was that about? Why you need to take medicine? And for some people, it would be a, a, a perfect solution, no doubt about that. But for many people, it will not be because they still have the problem that obesity is just a symptom. That this goes way beyond exactly. what the scale says. Exactly. On a more macro level, Novo Nordisk's runaway success is beginning to shrink entire sectors of the global economy. Fast food, big box stores, even Krispy Kreme. They're already tightening their belts in a universe where people are less hungry. Still, there are competitors and counterfeits out there. And Chinese companies are already in clinical trials for generics. But for now, the world's weight surplus remains the Danes and Peter Lund Madsen's economic surplus. Do you own Novo Nordisk stock? Yes. I have for many years, like many other people in Denmark. How are you feeling about your investment? <laughs> Everybody has the feeling that this will go on forever. And they are very, uh, they're very, uh, yes, happy. <laughs>